I'm telling you, there's a lot to be said for being all in. Whatever season of life you're in, whatever vocation, be all in. I was all in single. I was all in engaged. I was all in married. I am all in married. I am. I was all in when we had no children. I'm all in with children. It didn't suddenly stop. I didn't suddenly get half-hearted when I got married. I didn't suddenly get half-hearted when I got a house. I didn't suddenly get half-hearted when I had kids. It's all in, all or nothing. There is no other option in Christianity. It's an all-in deal. It's always been an all-in thing. Now, God has done exceedingly abundantly above anything that I could have imagined. And God has always been faithful and looked after me. But let me tell you, this is not a career. It's a calling. Following and serving Jesus is a calling. And so are we willing to drop everything and be all in? Because I don't think we're often willing to burn all those bridges and to be all in. To say a lot of us have got an option B and a plan C, just in case this doesn't work out. But I wonder for someone watching this today, and God's saying, are you willing to burn the bridges? No plan B, no plan C and no plan D. Because to be all in for God means it's plan A and nothing else. See, I've got no backup plan. If I don't do this, there is nothing else for me to do. Jesus is going to have to take me home because I have no backup plan. There is nothing else that I lie awake at night thinking, yeah, well, occasionally I must admit, I think maybe waiting tables on Santorini would be a nice option, but, you know, for about five seconds. But I have no plan B. It's not like, well, if this doesn't work out, then I'm going to go and do, there is no, it's all in. It's all in. And God's looking for a generation of people that would be all in to the call of God that say, I am following you. I am serving you. I am all in. You might remember in Luke 9, 57 to 62, it says Jesus rebuked his would be follower because he could see into his heart. Do you remember that scripture where he said, no one that puts his hand to the plow and turns back is fit for the kingdom of God. Because he said, let me just go back to my mother and father. Now you might go in this text, why is it okay for Elisha to go back? And why in Luke chapter nine, was it not okay for them to go back? Well, Jesus could see into his heart. Elisha wasn't going back in any sense to kind of go, I, I really want to stay here. He was going back to burn his bridges, which we're going to see. Elisha was going back to burn the bridges. The man here in Luke chapter nine, he was going back to keep a foot in each camp and Jesus could see right into it and he said, no, no man, after he's put his hand to the plow and said, yes, is fit for the kingdom if he's going to look back. And a lot of us, we kind of go forward looking back. We're kind of half-hearted. We're sort of following Jesus until that cute, unsaved girl or guy comes along. <laughs> until a better job offer comes along. Until someone offers me and we will sell our birthright for a bowl of lentils in light of eternity. And we give up this great thing God has called us to do. And we embrace a small life because we're not willing to burn the bridges. We're looking back and we're comparing and we're competing and we have a very short term view of things. And we think, well, they're being paid more and they've got more opportunity. And that, But it's all very short term because if you span it over the long term, I'm 51 now. I've been doing this deal for 31 years. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never seen over the long haul someone who has followed God wholeheartedly do worse than anybody that has only followed God half-heartedly. I'm telling you, there's a lot to be said for being all in. Whatever season of life you're in, whatever vocation, be all in. I was all in single. I was all in engaged. I was all in married. I am all in married. I am. I was all in when we had no children. I'm all in with children. It didn't suddenly stop. I didn't suddenly get half-hearted when I got married. I didn't suddenly get half-hearted when I got a house. I didn't suddenly get half-hearted when I had kids. It's all in, all or nothing. There is no other option in Christianity. It's an all-in deal. It's an all-in deal. And so Elisha asked Elijah, you know what happened? He said, he, he went back and not to go back to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to kind of get caught up in all of this. He went back to burn some bridges. And we see that in verse 21, because in verse 21, he says to him right here, he says, and he returned from following him and he took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of oxen and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. So he went back for the last time, he went home to burn some bridges. There are some of you, it's time in certain circumstances to go back and burn some bridges. He killed some cows. Please don't do that. But he killed some cows. <laughs> he burnt his plowing equipment. Now this is his livelihood. 
This is his 401k. This is everything. He's going, there is no coming back to this. I, I, there is no plan B. I don't know whether you've burnt all your bridges, but there were some things in my life that when I started following Jesus, it's just like, I can't go back. I have to burn this. I have to cut it off. It's no longer a part of my life. I cannot go back. I, I moved from one job into doing ministry. Well, that was it. There's no plan B. Okay, we didn't have the perks that that job had. It didn't have the income that that job had. It didn't have the retirement that that job had, but you know what? I had to burn those bridges because this is what I was doing for Jesus. This is what I was doing for Jesus. And then he had a party and he kissed his family and friends goodbye. Sometimes you've got to have a little sacrifice burning bridge party. It's like, this is it. We are done. It's not happening. He knew he could not go to where he was going with God without leaving where he had been. Some of you are trying to go into the future with God, but you're not willing to leave the present or the past that you've been in. And you cannot step into the future without leaving the past behind. You have to be more loyal to your future than you are to your past. You have to make a decision that at times you're going to have to burn some bridges. Painful, but you're going to have to do that. And he was basically, he was a man of means. So he was saying goodbye to all of his comfort, all of his security, anything that he could have fallen back on, but he was willing to be uprooted. He was willing to be interrupted and he was willing to be inconvenienced. And you know, some of us miss the call of God in our life because we're not willing to be uprooted. We're not willing to be inconvenienced and we're not willing to be interrupted. I want the call of God, but I want it in this place because this is where I've grown up and this is where all my friends are. And this is where I know. And God's like, I would love to do so much with you, but in that little small, small space you've given me, I can't do it. What I've called you to do is over here. And you know what? We've got to be willing to let go and get God. And someone has tuned into this and you're like, I can't believe she is saying this. She is speaking right to me. And you're absolutely right. I am. Because it's time to burn some bridges and it's time to move on into the purposes of God. He was going all in. That's the bottom line. He was going all in. There was no turning back no contingency plan. Some of you need to kill plan B, C, D, and E. There is only plan A, and that's what we need to do. God's looking for a generation who, like Paul, he says in Philippians 3, 7 to 8, but whatever it was to my prophet, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything as a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may know Jesus Christ. And so I'm asking you, do you consider it all rubbish compared to Jesus Christ? Or have you got a whole lot of options out there because Jesus is just one of your many options. Now, let me just say the Lordship of Christ is not up for grabs. It's not an optional thing. It's not part of the five things that I do. Everything is subordinated to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in my life. Every relationship, every interaction. And some of us, we are not willing to let go of the idols in our lives, which often take the form of other people or our comfort or our ease. And we miss the purpose of God because we don't make Jesus truly Lord and Savior. And if we are going to move forward with God, we've got to be all in. That means that it may mess up some of our family relationships. It may mess up some of our friendships that have just been going the same way the whole time. You may have to mess it all up a bit to step up and into what God has for you. Do not make an idol, whether it's your spouse or your children or your friends, do not put them above Jesus. And when I'm saying that, someone's going to hear that and try to take that out of context. Jesus doesn't call us to split up our families. If we're married, stay married to the partner. You, Christine, this is my second or third. Make this one work, whichever one it is. That's okay. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about irresponsibility. But I'm saying some people, because they've made an idol of either their, their spouse or their children, are not fulfilling the call of God. And what it is, it's hindering actually everybody else. When you put Jesus in his right place, every other relationship gets in its right place in your life. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments. And if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.